my name is Anna. In the past few weeks, me and some other Claire's Court girls have been working together to produce a short film to help you try and understand self-harming and what to do if someone around you is in the situation. Around one million people from the UK commit suicide each year. Many teenagers turn to self-harm and suicide instead of talking about things with friends or family. Our research found that 88% of girls, but only 12% of boys, the majority of people that self-harm have problems such as low self-esteem, depression, drugs and alcohol abuse, eating disorders or suffering from a traumatic experience. Some girls say it helps them through their worries, but really it makes things worse. The visible and mental scouring thing is, some things stay with them forever. It shocked me when I discovered one of my close friends was having a hard time at home which was leading to self-harm. The way she was so upset made me feel useless because you are not only hurting yourself but close people around you who really care about you. There are so many people you can talk to and charities to help you speak out. You are not on your own, there are charities that help. If you are a friend that has suspicions, you can speak out too. We are going to interview a couple of people here. My name is Amy, and I'm Millie, and this is Finn. Hello. We are going to ask him a few questions about self-harm. Have you ever been in a situation where someone has told you they self-harm? Yes. Did you do anything to help? I tried to, but unfortunately it resulted back to self-harm. Why do you think people self-harm? Sometimes it's a cry for help, and sometimes it's just that they can't do anything else. they tried different resort, different routes, and different ways to, to help. Unfortunately, it, it, did, it hasn't worked, so they have resorted back to self-harm. Do you think self-harm is linked to self-esteem and mental issues and problems at home and being bullied? Or? Yes, I think it's an overwhelming issue of um, the individual trying to sort out their life and the stresses and the situations that they get into all build up on them. Some people, with it, some people can deal with it in a certain way, other people, can, other people cannot, and they have to find ways of, of coping with stressful situations and stresses from school and friends and from parents and teachers. Thank you very much, you've been very helpful. Hello, my name is Anna. And I'm Lily. Today I'll be interviewing and spoke about self-harming. Have you ever helped somebody through the situation of self-harming? Unfortunately, yes. Um, and certainly in the last four or five years, more than I've done perhaps over a period of 20 years, which is a little sad. Yes. How many people have you encountered throughout your career? Um, well, I have to be honest, uh, at the beginning of my career, probably nobody, I don't think it was really heard of other than perhaps people in A&E that sort of overdose, which of course is a way of self-harming. But I think now we look on self-harming as to young boys and girls, um, you know, cutting themselves or burning themselves um, and doing unpleasant things to themselves. So it has moved on hugely, certainly in the last four or five years, as I said. I would say certainly 15 to 20 people in the last two to three years that I've actually had to physically help you. Why do you think people self harm? I think that a lot of young people, sadly, are under a humongous amount of pressure these days on various ways, and a lot of them just can't cope with that stress. And unfortunately, self harming is used as a mechanism for a release. Why, I don't know. Um, the thought of harming myself really makes me feel unpleasant, I suppose. Um, I do think that, um, uh, I want to say computers, I want to say websites, etc. are a big, big problem because these days everybody puts everything on online and you can, you know, you can click onto a website and see people self-harming and it makes it an okay thing to do. Um, I think a lot of youngsters now, you've got me on my soapbox here girls, I have to say, it makes a lot of youngsters, unfortunately, are not as resilient as, say, when I was at school. When I was at school, I, who, nobody had ever heard of anything like that, ever. And, you know, if, if we were under exam pressure, we just had to get on with it. And I think these days, youngsters now have very little self-resilience. And therefore, they can't cope with the slightest little thing that goes a bit wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm Anna, and this is Ellen. Hi. We're going to be asking her a few questions about self harm. 
And do you think that pressure from school and home and bullying and stuff can um, lead people into self-harm? Yeah, it can. It does. Um, if everyone's expecting to do really well in school and you're not and you can't and you do everything they can do but you have to, um, then it will probably lead to self-harm. Mm. How do you feel about people self-harming? Well, it's it's quite bad because I don't because I don't really see why people need to nurse themselves to feel better. But um, it's but some people um, turn to it because they don't feel like they can actually um, confide in anybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Three, two, one, action. Hi, I'm Amy, and I'm Lily, and today we're going to be interviewing Mr. Beavis about self-harm. Okay, let's what, go. What can be done to relieve pressure or stress for people that self-harm? Well, I think we're not just talking about people that self-harm. I think mm -hmm. we can talk about stress for anybody in the school. And do I think, I think there is more pressure on now, particularly as you get older, about exam results. I think parents apply a bit more stress about exam results. I think you hear about it in society. But I think there's other things that happen in your lives that school is part of, but not, not the whole thing. So, for example, social media. You know, this is not something that your generation has, has to deal with, whereas older generations have not had to deal with. In my day, if you fell out with a friend in school, you'd go home and didn't even bother to use the telephone. Wouldn't see them for 12 hours. And by that time, you'd kind of calm down. You guys are probably on your phones or on, you know, on Facebook or on Instagram or something, contacting each other all the time. So I think schools can help you manage those things. I think in terms of exams, I think what schools should do, and we try and do here, is I don't, we don't talk about grades at the end of the year at GCSE. The one thing we talk about is how well you're working, yeah. you know, both how hard you work and how smart you are when you're working. You know, are you good at revision? Are you good at note-taking? Can you understand exam questions and answer them properly? Do you, do you work well for your homework and so on? So it's about how well you work, and then if you work well and work hard, the grades will look after themselves. Yeah. So I think schools do need to think carefully about the pressures on young people these days, because they are greater than they were, say, 10 years ago.